Welcome to another edition of uh, Tackle Making 101. I'm Jeremy, your host, and uh, today what we're doing is we're making up some Arky Jig Heads. Um, to complete a set of 200, I need to make uh, 17 more sets of 3 to make 51 jigs. So we got our uh, lead in the pot there, melted, ready to go. I've already poured a couple jigs. Because got all my hooks over here waiting. Got my torch here. I'm all set up. I'm gonna just swing this around here so you guys can see what's going on. Sorry about the video quality. As y'all know that I'm no expert at this. I make fun like I am, but I'm not. I was just trying to share with you guys how we do this. Team J Custom Tackle, that's the name of the company right now. We're thinking about changing it because there's another company that's the name real close to ours. And when you do an internet search, it's easy to get mixed up. So we're going to switch the name from Team J Custom Tackle, but I haven't decided yet. Maybe Arizona Bass Company. We'll take this and I'll heat it up. Make sure because on these Arky jigs, I'll heat the hook up and the base pin up a little bit. That'll help the lead flow down in the cavity there and really get a good pour. Otherwise, sometimes these four ounce Arky jigs, they just don't pour right. You got to be very precise when you pour these. You got to start pouring right in the middle of each cavity. And what I do is I pour it and I make a bridge here so when I take it apart, they all stick together for easy management. I just quit my job yesterday to do this full time. Um, working was just taken away from it. I don't want to put all I got into this, so I sell these things. at different venues. Um, I'm working on getting them, uh, getting a patent on my, uh, getting a logo and getting a patent on my logo and all that stuff. I'm working on getting them branded, I guess you could say. And I got quite a few things to do, but I can still sell these at Park and Swap and a little swap meet in Globe, Arizona by Roosevelt Lake. and still make profit better than what I was doing at work. I wasn't doing hardly anything at work the last few months. It was a really tough winter. So it's about 7.15, Wednesday morning, March the 7th, or 8th today, I think it might be the 8th, and uh, here we go, you can see that quarter ounce, that 3 eighths and that half ounce are all perfect. It, I mean, you heat the thing up, and it pours perfect, if you don't heat the thing up, it doesn't pour perfect. So what we're using here is we got three yacht for our uh, quarter ounce head. We got a four ounce, a uh, four yacht for our three eighths ounce arc jig head. And then we're running a big five yacht for our uh, half ounce. Now I can put these five yachts or four yachts in uh, all sizes all the way down to quarter ounce. As a matter of fact, here's a quarter ounce with a five out hook on it. Now, some guys like that. Um, I myself like that, the big five out hook on a quarter ounce. That's great for throwing in there and the light brush and, you know, with a weed guard on there. That's a great uh, quarter ounce in a pond. 
Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes a bigger hook helps get a better hook set. Sometimes it causes it to uh, get kind of weeds, but we fish all of ours with weed guards. Um, what I'm inserting here is these base pins. There's a cavity. I don't know if you can see it that well. There's a cavity that the base pins fit in. So when you pour the mold, there's a, uh, a recess inside the jig head to fit a weed guard in later on. So, again, I'll take it pretty high. I'll heat this side up just a little bit, then I heat the hook up and the base pin just a little bit. You heat the hook up in that base pin, and that's what really causes the, uh, the lead to mold down in there. Now, it took me a long time how to learn all this stuff. At first, I was getting frustrated because I didn't understand that the mold had to be so hot. The hotter your mold, the better. I mean, you can't get this thing too hot. There you go. What I'm really worried about is those little quarter ounce ones. Then we got three eighths and half, but the quarter ounce ones are the ones that generally get messed up. <coughs> you listen to a little bit of a band called Delta Nose. I've seen them live a few times. They are a lot of fun to go see. So I'll share with you guys, last night I made a little mistake, I put a, I have a rain cover that I put over my generator, and uh, last night to uh, make the generator more quiet, stupid me, I take the rain cover and put it over the generator while it's running, I've always done this, but it slipped down over the exhaust. And it chugged the generator out last night and I shut it off and it wouldn't start, wouldn't start, it wouldn't start all day yesterday. I thought, great, I cracked the head on it or something from overheating it. Tried to start it last night at about midnight. I woke up, came outside to try to start it because I couldn't, I couldn't rest easy about it. So this morning it fired right up. I don't get it. So. Don't ever get your generator too hot if you're using a generator. This is a, a mobile workshop that I have here. I take this thing camping and all kinds of stuff. And I'll go out and I make lures. And, uh, or I'll make lures in and out of my property. And uh, I run my generator to run all my stuff. I'm not running much, right now I'm just running this lead pot, but I uh, also run a uh, fluid bath to powder coat my jigs, to powder coat all of our jigs, and I bake them in the oven, and I run, I charge, I run my computer off that, so generator is a needed sensor, again I'll just heat this up, start with these cavities first, then just hit this lightly, you don't want to hit these too much. This to where you know they're hot, so that lead will flow down in there real good. Another trick is when you're pouring this, any slag that's coming out of the uh, pot, sometimes it'll get a little dip of lead coming off of it. You grab your pliers here and you twist the pot, there's a little rod that goes down, you just twist that a few times, that'll stop that thing from leaking out of there. Now when you pour this, you want to make sure that little thing is off there before you pour, otherwise it'll get caught down in there and it'll mess your jig up because it'll create a cavity inside your mold that you don't want. And you'll have a, a messed up jig head. You want to make sure to keep your lead clean. I mean, you want to use clean, good lead. 
Otherwise, your machine here don't work right. It just leaks and drips. You get a little bit of drip out of it no matter what. That's a piece of slag, is what I call it, from it dripping out of that thing. It gets a bunch of junk in here from the lead melting process, I guess. It's like a mineral deposits it gets. You gotta scoop those out every once in a while and get that crap out of there, otherwise it'll flow down and mess up your pour. I'll also take this old hook that I have here where I cut the, um, the eye of it off and I use this, I take my pliers like this, I grab the hook and I take this over here and I stick it in that nipple hole there's a little nipple that sticks out of the machine where the lead comes out I'll stick that up in there and clean a lot of crap out of there every once in a while Alright, the reason why I had such a big piece of slag is because I just opened it up and let it run and see how it's working. It's working great. I have a tin pan here on top of the, the base of the uh, pot, the, the melting pot here, so it uh, catches everything and I just put it back in the pot when I'm ready. A little bit. Get that lead flowing in there, right? There you have it. Let it cool till it's not fluid anymore. And then you can take it apart. There you go again. You got a nice set of three jigs, one of each size. But I'm not going to bore you with that all day long. Let's take a little look at the shop real quick. My dad uh, designed this. Um, I think it's freaking sweet. It's just a board with some pegs coming off of it, and then we took and put swivels on our jigs. So when I go to trade shows and stuff, the board would be painted pure white and have like a, a light shining down in a case thing. Um, but anyways, that's pretty sweet. Hats off the pops. Uh, he designed that, and uh, it, we're gonna run with it because it works and it looks great. You can we could you know for white piece of board we could put a couple hundred jigs on there to display and then uh we got our uh, uh sorry Bill. caught up on my chair over here let me get up and shut the door but uh these are um silicone skirts that we have that uh we're gonna put on display too so people could choose what they want. And then we'll have another board. Um, we've got way more skirts than this. This is just a few that I have that uh, are my favorite colors now. Uh, we've been making spinner baits in here. Got a bunch of spinner baits. Uh, those are our hooks, Eagle Claw. They're used for this uh, particular mold. We got three out, four out, five out, thousand 